This is part two. Please make sure to watch part one first to better understand the story and where we are now. And also, I'll have the links in the description box, but you can also check out the playlist. It's going to be the video right before this one. Thank you. Pitch Black Afro loved music so much, so he decided to go back, though this time it wasn't going to be at the same scale. He became part of a small group named Bombshell to Beast that played in a small pub in Bryanston on weekdays. Although he mentions that he really enjoyed this, but it wasn't as fulfilling as his national career. So he decided to try again. In 2013, he released another album, which was called Zonke Bonke. But unfortunately, this one didn't do well at all. The following year, he went back to the drawing board and decided to try again. He released another album a few months later called Indom Nandi. And unfortunately, it also did not do well at all. And around this time, the hip-hop industry in South Africa had completely changed and he literally did not have a foot in it. After his second failing album, he decided to go back to Soweto and completely gave up on music and he lived a private and quiet life with his wife. And for a couple of years, the public had little to nothing about Peach Black Afro until December of 2018. Pitch Black Afro and his wife had decided to book themselves into a B&B in Yeovil in Johannesburg to enjoy the festive season. And this was going to be around the 29th of December. On the 30th of December, they left the B&B to visit some friends who lived around Yeovil as well, Mr. Herbert, Joella and his wife. They started drinking and having somewhat of a good time there. Everything seemed great until Peach Black Afro started accusing his wife of destroying his music career in front of their friends. A few moments after starting these accusations, he decided to tell Catherine that it's time for them to leave and go back to the B&B. And Catherine was not really happy about this and she expressed that no, she's still having a good time. And Peach Black Afro told her that listen, it's time for us to leave. He then left her and went to the B&B by himself, and a few minutes later, Catherine decided to follow him. Catherine got back to the B&B, but stayed only just for a short while, and basically told Pitch Black that she was going back to Herbert's house because it was boring there, and she was having a great time. Catherine left and came back around 1 a.m. in the morning, and witnesses who were staying at the B&B say an argument erupted between the two, and Pitch Black started accusing his wife of disrespecting and humiliating him in front of friends. And again, he brought up the claim that she damaged his music career. A security guard from the B&B later claimed in court that there was lots of commotion in the room around 2 a.m., it is believed that it was during this time that Pitch Black Afro hit his wife against the wall, causing blunt force trauma, which would lead to her unfortunate passing. Catherine bled all over the room, and it was later revealed in court that Pitch Black wiped some of her blood and placed it on a sanitary pad, and placed the pad on her private parts, and this was done in an effort to conceal evidence. Eight hours later, at around 10 a.m. in the morning, Pitch Black Afro went to the front desk and asked the receptionist to please call an ambulance because his wife was not well. When the paramedics came, they pronounced her dead on the scene and Pitch Black Afro said that she started coughing blood after drinking the whole night and must have passed out or died from natural causes. He went on to say that some of the blood that was found in their room was menstruation blood because she was on her period. An autopsy report later refuted this, stating that the deceased was not on her period at the time of her passing. 
Emergency personnel reported that Catherine had bruises around her eyes and that she had blood pouring out of her ears. When explaining this, Peach Black said he only hit her the previous night, but not on the night of her death. He did, however, concede that they did have a verbal argument in the wee hours of the morning when she got back, but then he had decided to just let it go because he saw how drunk she was. Pitch Black was then charged with premeditated murder and defeating the ends of justice because of trying to hide evidence. In 2020, when the trial began, they decided to change the charge from premeditated murder to culpable homicide because the state felt that they could not find any evidence proving that Pitch Black Afro had actually planned to murder his wife. On the first day of his appearance, Peach Black Afro arrived in court as happy as can be and he started greeting everyone, from Catherine's family to the general gallery. The trial commenced and the judge found him guilty of culpable homicide, saying he was drunk and because of that, he could not have foreseen that pushing his wife against the wall would lead to her death. And hence, therefore, the judge felt that it was negligence on the part of Peach Black Afro and hence the conviction of culpable homicide and not premeditated murder. And in terms of the charge for defeating the ends of justice, he was found not guilty for that. Pitch Black Afro was sentenced to 10 years in jail with five of those years suspended, meaning he will be spending three to five years in jail and will be out by the end of 2023. And on that note, we have come to the end of the video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate you. Please remember to like, comment, share the video, and subscribe. And I'm also very open to suggestions. So if you have any case that you feel like I haven't done and you really, really want me to do, I'm very open to it. So leave those comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.